Hi guys, I'm Lee from Flaunt Digital and today I'm going to be talking to you on how you should be reporting on your content marketing ROI. So over the last few years, the importance and popularity in content marketing as a service and as a, an activity that brands are doing um, has obviously grown massively. But one of the key things that a lot of brands miss out on is how to actually track um, and refine that strategy and report on it. So one of the key points um, is looking at your engagement metrics. So specifically what I want to cover today is scroll depth and average time on page. So the way that we would set that up in Google Analytics is we use a third party um, piece of JavaScript to look at scroll depth, which looks at the percentage a user scrolled down the page. We then pair that with average time on page, um, and you can glean from that information how much time people are spending on your content that you're producing, and not only that, you can see sort of how far um, down the page those guys are doing. So if you create a 10,000 word article, for example, um, but there's only 25% of the page being read, you know that that's probably too long. Maybe you need to put um, a table of contents in there to make it a bit more user friendly. Um, just things like that, that for quite a little amount of setup, you can gain quite a lot of insight on. So average time on page is a metric that's built into Google Analytics, whereas scroll depth is something that you have to implement through a, well, we use a third party tool. Um, I'll link that in the video, it's through um, parsnip.io. So shout out to him for that. Um, once you've collected a good amount of data, um, you can start to put it in Excel and fairly quickly analyze your content and look at um, sort of page views versus average time on page and quickly get an insight into how well your content's doing. So although your page views might not necessarily um, be too high, if someone is spending a decent amount of time on that page, it means that they're getting value from that content um, and that content is working quite well from a user perspective. So that little insight um, is really valuable. Once you've got scroll depth implemented properly, um, you'll be able to go into analytics and go to behavior and events in the navigation um, and easily see your scroll depth per page. There's four different page percentages, so you can do 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. So um, you know that if one person out of 100 is going 100% down the page, that that's typically, um, we can deduce from that 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 person is reading the full article, whereas if, let's say, 95% are only going 25% of the way down the page, um, they're either bouncing or they're not finding that content valuable, or you may have um, a pop-up that puts them off. There's a, a lot of things that you can get out of that. When this data starts to become really valuable is once you've implemented this and you've collected a few months worth of data, you can do a rolling average across all your content and use that as sort of a benchmark to steer everything ongoing. Um, so for example, if you've got six months worth of data and you've got an average scroll depth of 75%, but any pieces that perform under that you can then think, well, are, they, are those not performing because the content's not good enough? Are those not performing because we've changed the format in which we're laying out that piece of content? These are all things that can um, clearly indicate and steer your content and make it more effective. So one of the most difficult things that brands often find is calculating the return on investment when it comes to content. So the way that we do it is we look at three main metrics. So we need to try and understand the lifetime value of a customer. Um, conversion rate and then cost. So when we say cost, we mean the cost to produce the content. So for example, if you have a lifetime value of a thousand pounds, your conversion rate is 3%, but your cost to produce content is 3000 pounds. <throat> and then in this example, we're going to use 50,000 visits of which you convert 300 leads. And those out of those 300 leads, you get nine customers. So the lead value is £9,000, an ROI of 300%. The reason why this combination works so well is because you're looking at engagement and that correlates directly to return investment, which then goes back to the bottom line revenue. So where a lot of brands typically go wrong is they will look at top line things like impressions, shares, when really that doesn't give a true indication of how much value you're giving your customer and how much time people are spending engaging with your content. So you struggle to report a clear return on investment for that. So if you can get this process in place, um, you can get your wider team involved, the people that are creating the content. The more data that you collect, the more refined you can be with your strategy and the better content you will end up producing. And then that will directly tie back to bottom line revenue. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, comment below. I feel like I'm being interviewed.